I am happy to be joined with the CEO of DigiCrypt's Blockchain Solutions, Mr. Chris Carl. How are you, sir? Doing very well. How are you? Excellent. Looks like we're enjoying life. Are we up north somewhere? Whereabouts? Just one last day. We're uh, heading back to the city today, but uh, kind of bouncing back and forth a little bit. Yeah. How's the uh, whole life uh, been transferring for you, or transforming for you since uh, COVID's uh, obviously unveiled everybody's lives in the last six months? hasn't really changed our life business-wise at all. Um, we are a very digitally oriented company, and frankly, we've been using Zoom as our primary form of communication around the world for the better part of three years. So for us, it was just uh, carrying on as normal, and we didn't yeah. have well, let's, let's talk about the business then, because let's face it, everybody's you know, habits have changed dramatically. I think this was always a trend that we were headed towards. COVID obviously fast forwarded that pace uh, overnight, so to speak. So DigiCrypt's blockchain solutions, it's in the data a analytics um, sector. So talk to me about who you are uh, and let's, let's find out like, you know, what the potential growth is and, and where you currently sit right now. Sure. Uh, so DigiCrypt uh, was formed a little over two years ago, uh, yep. really capitalize on the, you know, the, the digital uh, stock issuing space. Um, back in the day, 2017, 2018, we had something called ICOs, um, initial coin offerings, which, you know, sort of used and, and was leveraged off of, of digital currencies or cryptocurrencies. Yep. Uh, but they weren't really you know, regulatory compliant. Uh, we knew that. And, and we were more interested in something called security token offerings, which were 100% compliant with with you know, SEC and the OSC and, and other you know, governmental uh, regulatory bodies. That market's been a little slow to pick up, but what we have done in the meantime is we've really built out what is essentially a global uh, boutique investment bank. Okay. We concentrate on companies that usually have something to do with technology, although we're big in real estate um, as well, but companies that also share our interest longer term to be able to digitize you know, their offering, whether it's their assets. Uh, we've heard about things like digitizing um, real estate, digitizing uh, fine art, where you can create liquid markets out of, out of properties and assets that aren't necessarily liquid. So that's the backbone of what our company you know, was formed on. And then more recently, uh, we just did this acquisition of a company called Data Navi, yeah. which, which you know, is doing what we're doing, but taking it to yet another level that we already believed in. And, and that is using artificial intelligence, AI, okay. Um, to develop um, you know, predictive analytics and, and big words, lots of syllables, but really what that comes down to is taking big data, you've probably all heard about that at some point or another, but massive quantities of, of data, some of it publicly available, some of it you, know, you have to pay for yourself, and, and combining that and combing through it to find unique trends in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. uh, on, on the trend, you know, you're getting historical data as up, you know, up to and including this minute, sometimes in, in live streaming data. And, and you're looking for the past, but you're looking for those patterns that can then predict the future. And, and hence the predictive part of analytics. Analytics right. is taking you know, literally you know, terabytes and multiple terabytes worth of data, combing through it for trends of what you, the user, might want to see, and then using that to predict the future. Um, and that can be tested constantly because we could say, go back a full year. Uh, what are we at? September, uh, or sorry, October 26th, uh, right. uh, you know, 2020. Well, back in 2019, we can run models and say, well, based on the data available at that day, our prediction models would say, what's going to happen over the next 12 months? And we can compare that to what's really happened and, and sort of test out our predictive models. So why do we do that? There's a ton of different users, ton of different businesses that can really make valuable use of that predictive information. Okay. So I'm gonna bring two companies together. Um, the fact that we're in the business of helping issuers, companies who want to raise capital, raise okay. their capital. That means we're dealing with issuing companies and yep. we're dealing with investors. Both of those groups can use predictive analytics to make their offerings better, tighter, you know, more uh, true to what the marketplace and the marketplace trends are and therefore get their transactions done more efficiently. So that helps the issuers. And then on the, on the uh, investor side, they can use our tools to try to figure out where the trends are and what companies and what offerings that are out there in the marketplace best meet you know, their investment objectives. How so, much is this, I, I guess when I listen to your story and let's face it, the world is changing so rapidly with new industries emerging, but how much of, how much of a disruption is this in the investment community? And you know, uh, I guess from an audience perspective, when you're dealing with different companies, 
Um, is it more of a younger generation that's going to gravitate towards this or is it kind of all, all over as far as age is concerned? Um, let me answer that from a historical perspective yep. today and a future perspective. Historically, it's, you, know, you might argue against the young person's game and call it an old person's game in the sense of the only people, the only companies that could afford you know, predictive data analytics uh, were massive, like even Fortune 100 size companies, not exactly, even 500. Yeah. This is, you know, this is information where it takes um, a whole team of, of sort of data scientists, uh, engineers, programmers uh, to come together and, and sort of find all this data bring it together, write programs on it, so that the business leaders of that company can actually get some use out of it. Right? Okay. And, and the reason it takes such large companies to make benefit of it are, were twofold. One, um, very, very costly. You, literally, a company could spend millions of dollars developing all of this so that they can make some good use of it. And secondly, the percentage gains that you're getting from this are measured in a few percentage points over what you're already doing. Okay. Um, well, if you're using it and to jump away from my investment analysis for, or analogy that we're working on for a minute, if you were using it, for instance, as a way to predict sales, it might have 10 SKUs of products and where should we putting our energy in? Using data analytics, you might improve five, five percent, let's say. Remember a low yep. number. But if you've got five billion in sales, you know, that's 250 million extra in, in revenue. Okay? Right. So, if I did not right and got the zeros right. Um, but to get that, you need to have very large sales because it might cost you $10, $15 million to actually implement the program in advance to make that happen. So that was yesterday's world. It was old companies, well, well-established companies that were using this. Not necessarily old, but companies that had you know, massive assets. In today's world, you know, the costs are coming down a little bit in acquiring the data. Mm -hmm. uh, and so more and more companies are starting to understand this. And Why are prices coming down when it comes to data? the ability to collect massive quantities of data is, is becoming a little easier. There's more companies out there that offer either on a subscription basis uh, or, you know, fee for use kind of basis. There's more and more data available. And we all know the internet grows it's everywhere, by the day. right? It's everywhere. Um, so the cost of collecting it, say compared to even as little as two or three years ago has gone down, but combing through it and, and still developing something useful out of it from a predictive basis, still requires you know, custom uh, programming and data scientists to figure out you know, how they can deal with things and what have you. Um, and, and so the cost has sort of come down to mid range, but it really isn't available for the masses. Now go forward and frankly go forward you know, one or two quarters with ourselves and Data Navi. The big change in all of this is no more internal data scientists for that company, you know, no more programmers. We can do all of this on a subscription basis where we right. have a SaaS model yeah. And we can take a company in a given industry and we can let them work with us uh, by phone call online as we get going um, and select a variety of information reports that they're interested in. And we can very, very quickly and easily customize. And we're getting to a point where that's 100 percent automated. We don't even have to involve humans. Right. They can write their report requests and it comes in as a feed to us and they get their information back and then they can select how often. Uh, daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, whatever they want. To right. So historically, like as you're saying, with the amount of data that we're collecting day in and day out, a lot of companies historically in the past have done a lot of research in-house. But let's face it, you know, as companies continue to obviously downsize uh, as, you know, new opportunities are opening up, say, in your industry, but all traditional ways, uh, less and less people obviously are working within large corporations. So as we shift to sourcing it out, meaning companies like yourself, what type of clientele then you go after? Are you focusing primarily in the North American market or is this a global opportunity? And if so, what size of companies do you, uh, do you plan to target? Well, it's, like everything in life, it's a series of concentric rings, you know, the old yep. pebble into a, a flat pond. And so you know, we're working with, with companies right now that, you know, frankly, are already our clients in yep. developing beta you know, versions of this. Um, we have plans to move across Canada and the U.S. as, as North America very, very quickly over the next you know, three to four quarters. But because everything we do is electronic, you know, the, the world is our, our marketplace.